As I read here, the history of Fatima can be traced to the beginning of the 20th century. Three children were grazing a small flock of sheep on the Cova da Iria Valley, near the village of Fatima in the heart of Portugal. The date, May 13, 1917. Lucia de Santos, 10 years old, and her two cousins, 9-year-old Jacinta and 7-year-old Francisco, witnessed the sudden appearance of the Holy Virgin under a holm oak. They described her as a lady of white light. The Virgin Mary instructed the children to recite the rosary every day. The lady appeared five times more that summer. Her last appearance was marked by a miracle, the miraculous solar phenomenon of Fatima. The crowd that had gathered saw the pouring rain come to a sudden stop. The sun, which resembled a silver disk in the heavens, turned on its axis and appeared to fall to earth. Several years after the appearances, Francisco and Jacinta died. Lucia joined the Carmelite order of nuns. Her mission was to proclaim the message she had received from the Holy Virgin to the world. Since 1917, Fatima has drawn pilgrims from all corners of the earth. Yet only the Portuguese themselves, from far and near, make the pilgrimage to Fatima on foot for the ceremony on the 12th and 13th of May. Each year about 40 pilgrims depart from Villa Nova da Quira, located in the hills northeast of Fatima. It takes them three days to cover the 140 kilometer distance. Before setting out on the first morning, the group meets in front of the village cafe. <laughs> I'm making this pilgrimage to give thanks to the Virgin Mary. She is our mother. She is the light of this world. My light. The light of my family. I've been going to Fatima for 28 years now. I go because I believe in Our Lady and because she has given me everything I've asked for. She is my mother in heaven, and I talk to her every day. My husband passed away last year. That's why I'm going to Fatima. I made a vow for my husband's sake. I didn't want him suffering too much from his diabetes or from his heart attack. He'd also had a heart attack. That's why I made the vow, so that he could find peace. <laughs> the pilgrim's route follows roads and paths. The more direct, the better. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bedding down on the first night of the pilgrimage, blankets and other necessities are unloaded from an accompanying supply vehicle in front of the community center. The pilgrims sleep on the wooden floor. <laughs> Fatima has become the most important destination for pilgrims in Portugal, attracting around a million and a half travelers yearly. The atmosphere at the sanctuary echoes the most important of the commands given by the Blessed Virgin to the young shepherds. Pray and do penance. The track to Fatima is usually done in exchange for favor received. Pilgrims often make a promesa, a personal vow to do penance as a sign of their gratitude to the Virgin Mary. For many Portuguese, this means covering the last 500 meters on the marble floor to the chapel of the apparitions on their knees. The promesa is as old as the pilgrimage itself and comes from the depths of their very souls. After a short night's rest, the pilgrims from Villanova da Kira continue on their way. I'll keep coming here until I die, God willing, as long as I'm able. 
I've asked God not to let me go blind. I can't see anything out of this eye. So I've asked God to preserve my vision in this eye. I used to work in the mines. Once I got trapped down there, death was staring me in the face. The only one I could turn to was the Blessed Virgin. She saved me. Thank God. A friend of mine lost his life. I asked the Blessed Virgin to grant me sufficient strength in my legs to allow me to visit the holy place for as long as possible. I know people who don't believe that the Blessed Virgin can perform miracles, but she has performed many miracles in my life. People sometimes say to me, you're going on a hike, are you? I say to them, no, I'm keeping my vow, my duty. is the mother I never had. My mother died before I had the chance to get to know her. I didn't know about Fatima either because no one in my family was religious. I didn't know God. I knew nothing about religion. Even as a child, I was aware of a higher power. I cried because I didn't get enough love. I even prayed, though it wasn't the Hail Mary. But I always had the sensation of a powerful force that stood beside me, stood by me when I needed my mother. The accommodations for the second night weren't quite ready. Some improvising was needed before the group could settle down for the night in the house, which was uninhabited and in the midst of a renovation.
My mother was critically ill. She was having dialysis and awaiting a kidney transplant. I vowed that I would come here if the transplant went through. Because without the transplant, she would die. Shortly after that, she did indeed receive a transplant. So now it's up to me to make good on my vow. In the distance, the steeple of the Fatima Basilica. Before entering the sanctuary, the pilgrims from Villanova da Kira form a single group so that they can cover the last kilometer to the Chapel of the Apparitions together. E bendito é o fruto do vosso ventre, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mãe de Deus, vai por nós, pecadores, agora e na hora da nossa morte. Santa Maria, Mãe de Deus, rogai por nós, pecadores, agora e na hora da nossa morte. Being in Fatima confirms that feeling I had. Arriving here is a very pleasant sensation. You've reached your goal. Now I've fulfilled part of my vow. I've come out of gratitude to Our Lady. I've made this sacrifice to show my gratitude for the grace she has bestowed upon me. Whatever else I may have been through, 
I have been blessed with a loving husband and healthy, intelligent children. Following the prayer to the Blessed Virgin, some pilgrims fulfill their promesa. I'm here because of my arm. Thanks to the Virgin Mary, I don't need surgery on it. I'm here because of my granddaughter, too. I was distressed at the doctor's prognosis that she would have an intestinal disorder. At birth, she was placed in a kind of machine for examination. And thanks to Our Lady, everything turned out all right. So I vowed to walk from the High Cross to the sanctuary on my knees. Pilgrims from all over Portugal and a few from abroad have arrived in Fatima to attend the yearly ceremonies. Near the chapel of the apparitions, candles of all shapes and sizes are burned. Great numbers of wax figures are offered as thanks for healing or other graces bestowed by the Blessed Virgin. <laughs> of pilgrims wait patiently to have their confessions heard by one of the many priests at the sanctuary. The candlelit procession, held at night, is one of the high points of the sanctuary. Bathed in the light of several hundred thousand burning candles, the statue of the Virgin Mary is taken to the altar. When I arrive in Fatima, the tears always start to flow, all by themselves. I always find the ceremony very moving. It's one of those rare moments during your life, one of life's high points. For me, it's deeply moving. sacrifice out of gratitude, one we gladly make. It's a debt you have to pay off as long as you live. To me, the pilgrimage to Fatima can be characterized by the deep devotion felt by the people. A devotion that seems to come straight from the heart. To many Portuguese pilgrims, the Blessed Virgin Mary is a source of tremendous inspiration. Mm -hmm. 